It's Fitter Friday here at Second Swing Minnetonka. I'm Thomas Campbell, here with fellow fitter James Tracy. Good morning, my friend. How are you? Doing good. good. Uh, today we thought we'd maybe discuss bounce, how it's important. We've had, we have a lot of uh, customers coming in asking what bounce I should play, why I should play it. You know, essentially just, we just created a discussion on really the importance on bounce and how it works. Yeah, and it's a, it's a question we get all the time. I mean, obviously your wedges are huge tools in your bag in terms of scoring, yep. um, you know, in addition to selecting the right loft, what brand, what shaft should I play, what lie angle. I mean, bounce and grind are kind of this mystery that a lot of golfers you know, want solved and, and usually look to us to help with those types of things. So you know, obviously you know, a lot of our wedge fittings um, happen as a result of an iron fitting too. So I think first step is learning about what type of irons that that customer plays. Yep. You know, as you get into the nine and you get into the pitching wedge of their set, how are they using those types of clubs? Mm -hmm. Are they playing a big time cavity back iron or are they more of a competitive player if they have smaller irons? That affects some decisions. Certainly starts to affect the decision on what you're gonna do in your gap wedge, right? Correct. So yep. you know, when it comes to bounce and grind, you know, the easy one to figure out is usually your gap wedge. You know, because you're either gonna, one, do the gap wedge that matches the iron set that you play. Might be the set gap wedge, which the bounce is already kind of predetermined for you. Yep. If you're selecting more of a wedge specific design like a Vokey or a Cleveland or a Ping glide wedge, well, there's usually not a ton of bounce and grind options in the gap wedge. Usually you just have a little lower or a little higher. Correct. Right? And yep. I think the biggest decision there is how do you present that club to the ground? If you're a divot taker, if you're historically steep, if you historically struggle with contact from that particular yardage, then we're probably thinking a little bit more bounce. Um, if you don't have any of those issues, um, maybe want to generate a little bit more spin or let that wedge get into the turf just a little bit better, then you're probably going with the low bounce option. But most companies aren't offering you a ton of bounce and grind options historically in like a 50 or a 52 degree, uh, what we would consider like a gap wedge. What yep. do you do in your gap wedge? So for me, um, I take, I, I do a um, eight degree bounce. I'm more of a picker. Yeah. So I essentially I don't have a very steep attack angle, more shallow, so a little bit less bounce. Yep. Um, so I know we kind of touched on figuring out what the nine iron and pitching wedge is at. Loft on the wedge is also important too. Yeah. So I know we've, we're trying to discuss you know, some bounce today, but really important to make sure you get your gapping correct as well with regards to your wedges. I think so for most to, players, if you can stay close to four or five degrees between wedge lofts, you're just going to have tighter gaps. I mean, competitive players, sure, they can have six or seven degrees in between and they've practiced those in between yep. yardages. They've practiced partial shots. They can execute those yardages with whatever loft they have in their hands. But for most of us that want a little more consistency and want the wedges to play nicely with the irons, it's good to try to keep the loft structure pretty close. I would completely um, agree. Yep. So once you have the gap wedge picked out, well then it's really just a decision of how many more wedges are you gonna play. You know, if you're only gonna do one more wedge, you know, call it a sand wedge, 54, 56 degrees, well that wedge you're gonna require it to do a lot of work for you. You're gonna, it's probably going to be everything inside 100 yards. It's going to be for most sand, players. It's going to be flop shots. It's going to be pitch shots. It's going to be chip shots. So correct. So then, in that scenario, if a player is telling me, "Well, I'm going to do a pitch, a gap, and, and a sand wedge," because I want more hybrids, I want more fairway woods. Well, then I want that wedge to be as versatile as possible, which makes it hard for me to hedge towards the highest bounce. Because then in scenarios where you might want a little less bounce, now that wedge isn't going to be great for that shot. And same thing if I give that player a really low bounce wedge, if they're just doing three wedges, if I make that highest loft really low, well then all the times they need high bounce on the golf course, now that wedge isn't performing as well. So for the players that do the three wedge setup, pitch, gap, sand, and that highest lofted wedge is 54, 56 degrees, I'm usually trying to keep the bounce fairly in the middle. Yep. Um, unless they're just a historical digger. I mean, anyway, we know they need as much bounce as humanly possible. Think as bounce is your friend. Yes. So bounce is definitely gives you that forgiveness. It is. Yes. If you yep. want your wedges yep. friendly, you're yep. going to go with bounce. <laughs> it also, if it's a player that doesn't tend to open the face up, maybe out of the bunker, but outside of that, they play most of their shots with a pretty square face. They're going to lean on a seven iron, nine iron for chipping most of the time. Correct. Well, then that player might not benefit from necessarily a bounce that's low, which usually comes along with a grind that is toe heel relief to lay that face open. So if it's that type of player, the digger, not super creative around the greens. I just need something that I can hit from 80 yards and in, but I'm usually gonna bump and run when I can. 
that might be a player we go with more of a high bounce wedge on that three wedge setup. Yeah. You, talk about, you talked about versatility. Yeah. Um, versatility is another very important factor depending on what golf course you play. Sure. If you play on different conditions during your year, it's nice to have that versatility. Yeah. If you particularly just play on firm conditions all year, you know, a little bit lower bounce might be a better option as well. Correct. If you play in softer conditions, a little higher bounce might be a good you know, option. But if you travel a lot, you know, having that versatility, that mid bounce option also would good, be a good option as well. Yeah, so. it's never going to hurt you. It's yep. a safe pick. You know, Correct. I think that, you know, when you're talking about looking at wedges that have noticeably more or noticeably less, you want to make sure that you've identified the shots in your bag that maybe you aren't very good at. Maybe you struggle hitting flop shots, especially off a tight lie. Well, it might be because your, your wedges have too much bounce. You just can't get that leading edge down and under the ball. Yep. Ultimately, I think that for most golfers, if you can have two edges, a sand and a lob, a 54, 58, 56, 60, that you can have different bounces with, different grinds. Now you talk about versatility. Well, now you have more shot making around the greens. I mean, I know you hit probably 17, 18 greens around, so you probably don't need a lot of uh, versatility in your wedges. I still um, have four wedges in my bag, though. That's correct. So, correct. so <laughs> even, even, even players that hit a lot of greens, yep. they want those options on the course. And so if you're a player that can recognize a scenario where a little less bounce might be better, you know, or a shot where I want to have a little toe and heel relief, that's why I go with a C grind on my wedge or an M grind or an L grind, something where there's a ribbon on the back, there's toe and heel grind, so I can lay that face open and really slide that club underneath. And those are types of shots I try to play on the course. Well, then you want to have a wedge that allows you to do that. If you're trying to hit that shot with a bounce and a grind that doesn't really correspond to that technique, well, then you're going you're gonna to face some challenges there. Um, having a higher bounce wedge, say in your sand wedge, and then maybe a low bounce wedge in your lob wedge, it gives you that versatility. Does, so depending yep. on the shot, if you can read the lie and read the shot and you're intentional about it, that might give you a lot more shot making opportunities around the, around the greens. I'm sure that's how you kind of set your bag up. Yep. So I, I essentially go from 8 to 10, then to 12, essentially, in bounce. So my 60 degree, I have 12 degrees of bounce. So I have a little bit more bounce. Um, my sand wedge, I have 8 degrees of bounce, just yep. to have a little bit of versatility as opposed to going 8, 8, 8 all the way through. Right. So right. it gives me options around the green. Yep. So I think I a think couple things to think about when you're looking at buying wedges. One, figure out how many wedges your bag has room for. If you're a three wedge setup or a four wedge setup. If you're going with four different wedges, make sure you add some versatility to your bag and identify how you hit those shots. What do you do from 40 yards from the fairway? What do you do when you're stuck greenside? What do you do out of the sand? What club do you typically use out of the sand? Do I like to play shots in the back of my stance, in front of my stance? Be thinking about those things. Hopefully if you're working with a uh, a good club fitter, they're going to ask you those questions as well to get you thinking about those things. And ultimately, what I'm trying to do when helping a player pick the right bounce is I'm just trying to help them put wedges in their bag that helps them hit the shots that they're struggling with. Make those shots easier so when you are faced with a scenario where you have to scramble, you're trying to save a bad iron shot, or you're trying to save par, you have a equipment that can get you back in a scoring position. And ultimately, that's what the bounce and the grind are there for. James, thanks for your insights. All excellent stuff to talk about with buying, when buying your next wedge. Thanks, Thomas.